we're going to be trying to calculate the final velocity of this hoop. So this is a hoop. Uh, what is the final velocity when it reaches the bottom? And also, what is the angular acceleration along the, on the way down? Now, remember that previously we had boxes sliding down ramps, and they were either um, sliding with friction or sliding without friction. And so it was really easy. You just figured out, you know, you have to start with potential energy, and then either you set it equal to the kinetic at the bottom or you s subtract it off the work done by friction and then set that equal to the kinetic energy at the bottom. Here we got to worry about something else, which is we will have this thing the moving down here with a translational velocity of the center of mass. And that got similar to what we did before. So we're going to have some kinetic energy due to the translational <laughs> energy of the center of mass. But this thing is also going to be rotating. And so we're going to have some kinetic energy due to the rotation. Rotation. All right. And the new idea for today is that the kinetic energy due to the rotation is equal to one half i omega squared. Look, it's really similar. It looks it looks similar to one half m v squared for the kinetic energy of translational stuff, but this is just one half i omega squared. All right, so now let's go back and let's let's start cranking out some ideas here or cranking out some answers. So the potential energy at the top is going to equal the kinetic energy at the bottom. And we'll, we'll just call it regular kinetic energy. Uh, but it's also going to have kinetic energy due to its rotation. So it's co technically called co kin uh, rotational kinetic energy. But I'm just going to leave it as kinetic energy rotational. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to say mgh equals 1 half mv. And this is going to be the velocity about the center of mass, 1 half mv squared plus one-half i omega f squared. Because, again, we are interested uh, at the bottom, what's happening to it. So um, what we're going to do now is we're trying to get at the final velocity at the end, so we've got to figure out a relationship between omega f and velocity at the bottom. And so remember that uh, trans uh, tangential velocity is equal to r omega. So um, omega is equal to v sub t over r. So let's continue. mgh equals 1 half mvcm squared plus 1 half. All right, so you have to look up the moment of inertia for the hoop. And if you look it up, it's going to be just simply mr squared. And now this is going to be v sub t squared all over r squared, because remember it's squared there. Um, all right, so let's start simplifying here. We're going to take out an m, so we're going to be gh equals 1 half vcm squared plus 1 half r squared times v sub t squared all over r squared. Uh, the r's, as again, are going to start to go away, so let's simplify it even further. 1 half, all right. Here's where we get a little bit, our first sort of big decisions, decision time. Is the center of mass velocity the same as the tangential velocity? So that is not a given, so let's just think about it logically for a moment. I'm going to redraw this here. If you have the center of mass, or sorry, the velocity of the center of mass traveling down this way, and let's just say we have a tangential velocity that's not equal. Let's just pretend for a moment it's not equal. If you have the center of mass of the circle going down at a certain velocity, but the velocity at the point here lags behind it, the, the circle will become distorted because you have different parts of it traveling down at different velocities. So it, uh, just a bit of logic tells you that the v sub t does have to equal the v cm. Again, otherwise the object becomes distorted. And so now we can simplify even further that this becomes 1 half 2 v cm squared which means that gh is equal to vcm squared, which means that if you want to figure out the velocity at the bottom, it's just going to be the square root of gh. And I'm going to... Uh, so, I'm going to pause. 
Okay, so we're going to be trying to calculate alpha, the angular acceleration, um, as this thing goes down the ramp, and the angular acceleration should be the same anywhere on the ramp, so it doesn't matter whether it's at the beginning or at the end. So anyways, the first thing we got to do is figure out what formulas do we have that even have alpha in them. Uh, there's three that jump to mind. One is T equals I alpha, which is our new equation for today. We have omega F equals omega I plus alpha T. And we have omega F squared equals omega I squared plus 2 alpha theta. The first thing I want to point out is that we don't know the time it takes to go down the ramp, so this probably makes this one a bad idea. Now the only question is, between these two, the other two equations, which one's the easiest one to calculate? In order to, to use, you would either need to know this, or you would need to know this, right? Um, because we already, we already basically know what the, uh, the omega f is at the bottom, because if we know the, the final velocity, it's just really easy. So which one of these two variables is going to be easier to calculate? Getting the torque requires figuring out what is the, the force on the hoop, at what angle is the force applied, and what is the radial distance away. Definitely doable, but not a given. Theta is what is the total angular distance the hoop will need to travel through to go through that length. That seems to be a lot easier, a lot more straightforward, so I'm just going to pick this equation right here. Even though you could use this one, um, I'm just going to use the bottom one. So that's how I'm going to start. Omega F squared equals omega I squared plus 2 alpha theta. <clears throat> Remember that omega F was equal to uh, V sub T at R at the end. Um, so um, the omega F in this particular case was square root of G over H. So this is going to be square root of G H over R squared minus 0 squared because the initial angular velocity was 0. All over 2 theta equals alpha. Okay, now the only question is what's theta? So let me just do this in a different color. Theta is, as the hoop travels down this hypotenuse right here, what is the total angular distance that that travels? So another way of thinking about it is, um, if you have this idea where the total arc length is equal to r theta, the arc length is the total distance around. If you were to take, for example, a total distance around on a circle, you could flatten it out and turn it into a line if you wanted to. So this arc length could be thought of as a straight line. It's just a circle, the, the circumference, or this, this, the, um, it's the arc length straightened out would be a straight line. So I'm going to call this d equals r theta. So d over r is equal to theta. So now I'm going to go back to here and solve this. We're going to have gh all over r squared all over 2d over r. We have h's and we have d's. Since we know that um, h is equal to d sine theta, where theta in this case, theta refers to the, the angle of the hill, we can say that g sine theta over r squared over 2, sorry, I'm saying d, 2d over r. Sorry, this looks a little sloppy there. And now we can, we can simplify. We can say that uh, g sine theta all over 2r is equal to alpha. And that would be our expression for the angular acceleration as this hoop goes down the ramp. Okay, at this point we're going to compare uh, the final velocity at the end of the ramp with uh, a disk versus the hoop that we already calculated. So for a disk, so we're going to um, go through this a little bit faster. Um, the PE equals KE, the translational kinetic energy, plus the rotational kinetic energy. So this is going to be mgh equals one-half mb center of mass squared plus one-half i alpha squared. All right, so mgh equals one-half mvcm squared plus one-half. Okay, if you look on a 
um, a table for the moment of inertia for a disk, you'll discover this one half m r squared. Remember that omega is equal to v sub t over r, so this is going to be v sub t over r squared. So now I'm going to cancel out some m's um, and do some other simplifications. So g h is equal to one half v c m squared plus um, one half r squared v sub t squared over r squared. So this is going to be g h equals one half um, v c m squared plus one half v sub t squared. And I'm not sure if I covered, yeah. So uh, for the reason I already I talked about before, the velocity of the center of mass and the velocity, the tangential velocity have to be the same because as this thing travels down the hill, you can't have different parts of the circle, or in this case the disk, you can't have different parts of the disk going down at different rates because then the disk would come, become distorted. Every single part of the disk has to be going down the, the ramp at the same, same uh, translational speed. So GH is equal to 3 fourths VCM squared, right? Because one, one half plus you know, one fourth is 3 fourths. So square root of 4GH all over 3 is equal to the velocity at the bottom. Okay. Compare that, if you remember, the, the this is Vm for the disk. For the hoop, remember it was square root of just gh. So this four-thirds factor means that the disk is going to be faster. It's faster than the hoop. Um, now what we can do is we can take a look at their alphas. And so I'm going to do this over here, the and using the same idea that I previously showed. Omega f squared equals omega i squared plus two alpha theta, which means that remember that um, oh, I guess I'll put it right up here. Omega is equal to v sub t over r. So this is going to be square root of 4 gh over 3 over r squared minus 0 squared all over 2. Again, remember that s is equal to r theta, which means this total distance d is equal to r theta, which means that d over r is equal to theta. Sorry, I got a little sloppy there. So 2d over r. And I'm going to zoom way in because I am I got a little bit big with my writing. So now we get to, okay, let's put it in blue now, that 4gh over 3 over, I'm sorry, r squared, all over 2d over r. And remember that h is d sine theta. So this becomes 4g sine theta all over 6r, which is 2 thirds g sine theta equals alpha. If you compare that to the previous alpha, this is magnetic, this is for a disk. The hoop, the alpha for a hoop, was one half. I'm sorry. Was, sorry. Was g sine theta over two r. So two thirds versus one half, which means that the angular acceleration for the disk is also higher. So if you were to race these things down a ramp, the disk would win, though because it has a higher um, angular acceleration due to its um, the disk due to its a lower moment of inertia. Yep.